Tyvola Road to the Phil's family is, uh, uh, that's a tough one. It was kind of an eerie feeling to go down that road. Even sometimes now, when you think about it, um, you think of him. For people in Charlotte, the Tyvola Road wasn't really anything. It was just country. It was a road that you would take and watch the 25,000 people crowded into that little coliseum to cheer on the, the Hornets. And one day, it changed to a place where a life was taken and so many lives were affected because of that one day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh. You're going to give me this. Yep. Earn it. You got to earn it. Oh, earn it. <laughs> Basketball is definitely in the Fields family DNA. Trey and Kirsty are very competitive. Their parents were very competitive, um, especially their dad. Bobby moved in my neighborhood when I was in the ninth grade, and he was in the 11th grade. He described the house, I was like, wow, that's right across the street from me. So needless to say, there was a little path <laughs> between my house and his house. Bobby was very smart in high school. He was very active in the honors clubs. I think he might have graduated with a 3.8 GPA. He went on to play college ball at Southern University where he majored in animal science. Bobby wanted to be a veterinarian, not an NBA player. And it really wasn't until his junior year in college when he realized, you know, hey, I'm, I really might have a chance of making it to the next level. Bobby Phils, he turns on Michael. Oh. Nice move by Bobby Phils. Morning. Shot rejected by Bobby Phils. A rubber wall block. Bobby didn't necessarily have an opportunity right away to play in the NBA, played overseas, played with the Cavaliers got to a point where he was a free agent, chose to come to Charlotte. Charlotte had a really a kind of under unexpected breakout season in 96, 97, and they were adding pieces to that and trying to make a run in an Eastern Conference, which at the time was dominated by Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. Bobby had gained a reputation around the league and through Michael's own words as being a real tough defender for Michael and other top players at the time. Phils shuts him off, steals the ball. Fires and hits from the left wing. People would always say he was one of the guys that guys on their team didn't like to play against because he was so physical, he was quick, he was strong. Bobby made Charlotte better in a lot of different ways. It was simply amazing to see him on the court, but Bobby feels off the court. God, he was surreal. Like, Bobby was just an amazing guy, a kind-hearted person, and genuinely concerned for other people. Just before 11 o'clock this morning, 30-year-old Bobby Ray Phils died in a three-car collision about the 1500 block of West Highvola Road. Mr. Phils, as you know, was a member of the Charlotte Hornets basketball team. Initial indications are that Mr. Phils was traveling at a very high rate of speed. His 1997 Porsche went out of control, crossed into the westbound lanes, and was struck in the driver's door area by another vehicle. A fourth car, driven by Mr. David Wesley, also a member of the Charlotte Hornets, was in close proximity to the collision and has been identified by a witness also as being driven at a high rate of speed at the time. That morning, I didn't get to tell Bobby goodbye. He just left, and I didn't hug him. I didn't tell him that I loved him. It was just a typical day. The firemen wouldn't let me go near his body. And so I pleaded with the guy, and I was like, look, I have to say my final goodbye. And he let me go. I held his hand, and I prayed with him. and I let him know that I was gonna take care of his kids. I lost my husband. 
My children lost their father. The Hornets lost an incredible player. The community lost a great community leader and role model. It was a great loss. Tell everybody where daddy is. Daddy is heaven with the angels. I remember just asking myself and asking my mom, like, why would God let this happen to our family? Like, what did we do to deserve this? Like, I'd throw away all this. I just want my dad back. As I grew older, you kind of realize that the hardships and the struggles that sometimes people go through, like, ultimately end up shaping you for, for the best person that you can be. They both have a natural um, athletic ability that's just God given to them. Trey was recruited by Yale. He wanted to go to Ivy League. Kirsty will be attending Wagner College on a full ride there. She worked extremely hard for that scholarship. They are very much like their father. I see Bobby all over Trey, the way he laughs, the way he smiles, the way he's just in deep thought. When I see my daughter out on the basketball court, that's her dad reincarnated in a female body. <laughs> and she has his eyes. I couldn't even imagine losing your high school sweetheart and the man that you love, but my mom has done an amazing and excellent job raising me and my older brother. She's my backbone, and I love her so much for it. They say it takes a village. She was the chief of the village. They grew up knowing that they had a great dad and they ended up being great kids as well. They are my everything. They make life worth living, love worth sharing. I put everything into raising them. I know Bobby's looking down, bragging to everybody in heaven <laughs> about his main man, Trey, and his baby girl, Kirsty. He's proud, very proud of them.